Hello lovely people, my name is Nicole and today I want to talk about Kill the Boy Band by Goldie Moldavsky. So the first part of this review will be spoiler free and then I will let you know when I'm going to get into more spoilery discussions so you don't get spoiled if you have not had a chance to pick this up yet. First of all, um, can we just appreciate the fact that when you take off the dust jacket, it's bright pink underneath. Like I don't think the camera does this justice, it looks kind of like a light like baby pink um from what i can see in my viewfinder but this is like neon pink it is so bright it looks awesome um so props to the designers of this book jacket also the end papers have concert posters which is just really cool it's just a really cool design for the book so if you don't know what this is about this follows a teenage fangirl for this one band called the Ruperts and they are of course a British boy band and one day she and a few of her friends are just kind of doing their fangirl thing quasi stalking the boys and end up accidentally kidnapping one of them and then things sort of progress and escalate from there. Um, I originally picked this up because it was marketed as sort of a dark comedy, which I'm really into, uh, and I enjoyed it. I didn't absolutely love it, I wasn't absolutely blown away by it, but there were a lot of parts that I thought were really funny. I think my main problem with it was that it spent a lot of time, I felt like, teetering on the edge of this is just too much, this is pushing my suspension of disbelief way too far and actually going over that edge to wrap back around to be a parody which is I think what it was intended to be. It was intended to be sort of a parody of extreme perceptions of fangirl culture and I think that in the end it got there but it spent a lot of time sort of going back and forth about whether or not I was sure if it was quite to parody level yet or if it was just weird. So yeah I definitely think that this is the kind of book that has a very specific audience. I think that if you consider yourself to be a fangirl, especially a crazy fangirl, and can kind of recognize that about yourself, um, that it's a really fun sort of poking fun at yourself, poking fun at, uh, at this group that you identify in by an insider kind of thing, but if you are just not into that world at all, then I think that you would not at all enjoy this book. It's it's de it definitely has a very specific audience. And this is a book that is driven by the absurdity of the plot. To me, all the characters felt like archetypes that were mainly used to enhance the funny factor. Um, so if you're looking for something with really good like character development and like emotional moments, then this is probably not the book for you. But if you're looking for something that is uh, light-hearted in a darkly funny way, then consider picking this up. I think I ended up giving it a 3.5 stars. So now I'm going to go into more spoilery depth. If you have not read this yet, I suggest you leave and go pick it up and then come back to me once you've read it and are ready to talk about spoilers. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was this relationship between our main character and Rupert K. Um, I was kind of conflicted about it because on one hand, it was really cheesy and kind of cliche and like it's the kind of thing that like you would read in a fan fiction in like a self insert fanfic but at the same time I kind of love cheesy. I mean it was the kind of thing that like once I'd accepted it for its cheesiness I could appreciate but it was kind of push in that boundary of this is really really cliche which is kind of a shame because I felt like that was intended to be sort of the like calm periods in between the storm of all the other crazy drama um, but then the one like calm period of like intended realism with like the only people in these groups who are actually semi-normal was cheesy and kind of unbelievably cliche Oh, which is kind of unfortunate. One thing that I noticed is that each of the different girls um, in her friend group kind of seemed like classic crazy fangirl stereotypes. You have Apple who is the hypersexual in love with let me like touch your body gross that kind of stuff um, fangirl and then you have Isabel who is the crazy stalker let me threaten your girlfriend on social media kind of fangirl and then you have Erin who is the like 
cool girl who will genuinely sleep with the band kind of fangirl. Um, and then of course our main character who is the normal one. And I kind of got the vibe that the boys in the band were sort of supposed to mimic the same kind of stereotypes. You have like the pretty airhead and the one that like no one actually likes and then like the one voice of reason and I can't remember who the fourth one was. That was actually a common issue I had in the book. Um, I kept getting all the rebirths confused which I feel like I have a little bit of leeway with just because they're all named Rupert. Confusing. I am a little worried that some people will read this and not quite get the whole parody aspect um, because I always felt that it was sort of teetering on that edge of parody, not quite sure if it was there or not, um, and so I am worried that some people will read this and just take it as either mocking fangirl culture or like, this is an accurate representation of, like, how crazy fangirls are kind of thing. I hope no one will read it like that, but I am a little worried that that might happen. Um, and then give fangirls even more of a bad rep. I think the author's intention was more along the lines of, like, Taylor Swift's intention while writing, uh, Blank Space. Sort of a, this is how you view us, so let's write something about this fictional character that you've created about me. One thing that I found really, really funny in the book was the end part when she was trying to confess what she and her friends had done, and she was just insisting over and over, I, like, I, I feel bad, I feel, I want to, like, tell people, I want to, you know, face justice, and I want to fix this, and... The cop just laughs in her face and it's like, yeah, okay. You and all the 500 other fangirls who are trying to cr take credit for this, y'all are all crazy. Uh, I just, I thought it was a really light-hearted touch to a book that had gotten really dark really fast. And I think throughout the book, the author was sort of playing with that sort of dark humor, humor in serious times. Let's push this crazy thing to the point of being funny. And I think in a lot of ways she succeeded, but I also think so at some points, it just wasn't quite there. So like I said, I didn't not like this book, but it wasn't, it didn't blow my mind. I think it could have been potentially brilliant. There just wasn't quite enough of the absurdist humor for me, or maybe I just didn't get enough of the absurdist humor that was in there while I was reading it. I don't know. I'm really interested to see what other people think of this book. Um, I haven't heard a ton of talk about it um, online, but I don't know, it's, it's an interesting book, definitely. And I'm really, really, really interested as to what other people think. So please, let me know what you think in the comments. I love you, and I'll see you later. Bye!